My coverage of Computex 2018 is brought to you by Gigabyte, Cooler Master, Team Group, and Thermaltake. Hey guys, I'm here at Gigabyte at Taipei 101 up on the 36th floor. They always set up here and it's always beautiful. You get a nice view. But I have something very special that I'm going to share with you guys and I don't think anyone has really talked about this on video yet. So, ha! Gamers Nexus and Hardware Canucks, I'm scooping you guys. It's right here and you guys may have already heard that uh, Intel demonstrated a 28 core processor running at 5 gigahertz. Uh, they showed an insane Cinebench score, but that was really all that they shared. I have the actual system that was used for that test right here, and uh, Gigabyte was only able to tell me a few very vague details. I'm going to see what else I can figure out just by looking at this system. So first off, how was it cooled? There was a lot of speculation that running uh, 28 cores at 5 gigahertz would require a lot of cooling. They actually have an AC unit here that's connected up, uh, so they're keeping this potentially below ambient. Uh, that's all set up in there, and I can't get too close of a look at it yet, but uh, I'm understanding that there's a Bits Power block in there. It's keeping everything nice and chilly. Uh, thanks, Bits Power, for your cooling expertise. Here is the Cinebench score, the run, 7,356 Cinebench points on a single CPU, 28 cores, and 56 threads. Uh, it's listed here at 2.7 gigahertz, but as you can see over on the left here, uh, 5 gigahertz was what it was actually running at. I might be able to get uh, them doing some more demos on this, some live stuff. They said they were actually able to beat this score uh, by doing some testing here, but maybe I will come back to that. So the first thing I think I figured out is that they have upped the game going from quad channel memory on the current X299 platform to six channel memory since there are 12 DIMMs installed in this system. I actually don't think all of those are populated. These are using the new Aorus memory that has um, some dummy sticks, but they do have at least six of those populated in there in order to get the system up and running. Now I can't show you guys the CPU itself since it's installed over there, but they do have the actual motherboard that is used in that system. And this is of course a prototype, a mock-up. But by looking at this, we can figure out a few more things. For example, LGA 3647. So this is a server socket and uh, does seem as anticipated that Intel might be answering Threadripper with this platform. Threadripper has been insanely popular. It was one of my favorite launches from last year and it's gained a lot of popularity. So Intel was like, hey, we have high-end server stuff. Maybe we can create a platform for the high-end desktop for enthusiasts and also take some of our existing uh, IP, our existing work we've done on that and bring it over. So you're gonna have a massive socket here similar to the, the TR4 socket that we have on Threadripper. Uh, we also have like the hugest chipset heatsink, as far as I can tell, that I've ever ever really seen on a board here. Granted, this board is very oversized. Uh, I don't think this board is conforming to a specific standard. Uh, maybe a SSI CEB, I don't see those boards too often, so I'm not sure about that. But we can also see 12 DIMM slots on either side of the CPU, and we can also see just the most insane power delivery configuration I think I have ever seen. I'm going to count them. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28 plus 1. Uh, looks like something around 28 plus 1. There are also potentially some additional power phases over here for the memory, but uh, yeah, I guess maybe one power phase per, per core. Granted, counting power phases isn't going to be the end-all be-all for any given motherboard. They can use different components in here that can uh, drive different levels of power, but they also have just a huge beefy heatsink on here. Uh, very heavy. Looks like they are using copper fins in that and four active cooling fans to keep everything cool. Okay, quick correction. I'm being told it's a 32 phase power delivery for that. I'm not going to go any more in depth, but I took some pictures of this board and I, I might send them over to Buildzoid. Finally, for power delivery, uh, we don't have just a single supplemental CPU power connector. We don't even have two. We got four uh, on either side of the board and spread out, I assume, to help distribute the power to all of those phases. Single slot spaced, full length PCI Express slots there, and uh, some other connectors that I'm not even really familiar with. We got a U.2. I imagine maybe they'll be adding some M.2 or something like that in the future too. But again, this is an early board. It's something that they mocked up so they could get the system up and running in order to demonstrate a 20 core, 56 thread processor from Intel, hopefully coming soon to an enthusiast platform near you. Now I know everything else is probably gonna pale in comparison to that first reveal of the 28 core uh, system, but I do wanna cover some of the other stuff that Gigabyte has on display. For instance, Aorus memory. It's RGB memory, uh, it comes in a four stick kit, and uh, they're gonna come to market with a two by eight gig kit. Two of these memory modules are dummies, so they don't actually have memory in them, but if you plug them in, you'll still get RGB lighting. So if you don't like having unpopulated memory slots in your system, then definitely grab this kit because you'll get four of them. And they say they're gonna keep the pricing competitive with other similar RGB kits like this. The only difference is, uh, instead of getting two sticks, you get four sticks, same amount of memory, but all the RGB. 
Here's a look at the Gigabyte SSD UD Pro Series. These are going to be very competitively priced, so in the $60 to $70 range for a 256 gig. And uh, they have a nice, clean look. Just the Gigabyte logo, a black housing, a pretty standard SATA drive, but at a very reasonable price. Gigabyte's also getting into power supplies. They've done this before, but the difference this time is they're actually manufacturing themselves. They're not going through a separate OEM like Seasonic or something like that. This is the Aorus AP850GM. It is uh, gold rated, it's modular, and uh, it's got the Aorus IP, or the Aorus design on it with the silver and orange. So especially if you like silver and orange and you want an all Aorus system, this is going to blend in very nicely. And here's a nice little mouse, the Aorus M5. Uh, it's got arm round switches, got a PixArt sensor, it's got a pretty cool look and design, it's going to have RGB lighting around the edges. The demo unit they had over there was pretty smudged up and everything, but you can at least see the lighting going around the sides. Uh, on the fly DPI switching, forward and back button as well. Some light indicators on the side to tell you what DPI setting you're at. Of course a nice little scroll wheel there. And on the bottom you can pop this plate off and it's got a unique weight system. Uh, they're actually scattered around there, so not just forward and back but side to side. If you have a hook or a slice, I guess, you can uh, put weight more on one side or the other to compensate for that. Look at this amazing view you have from uh, the Gigabyte Suite. Uh, I'm getting distracted. Alright, let's continue with a couple more actual products, uh, starting with B450. B450 is a successor to B350, which has been the insanely popular platform for Ryzen and Ryzen 2 processors. It was very popular because you could get very reasonably priced motherboards with the B350 chipset for around $80 to $120 or $130, which would give you all the functions you really need in order to get a gaming PC up and running. B450 is a successor to that, so it's going to be out of the box compatible with all your Ryzen 2 processors, and you won't have to worry about uh, maybe a potential BIOS update or anything like that. This specific board is the B450. The Aorus Pro Wi-Fi, so it's going to be reasonably priced, although we don't have a specific price on it yet. And the upgrades over B350 for this in particular is going to be the addition of a secondary M.2 slot, and Gigabyte has actually put big old heat sinks on both of those. So um, if you have two M.2 drives that might get warm, heat sinks for both, and those are going to help keep things cool. Another cool feature that you wouldn't expect on a more budget-oriented board is the fixed I.O. shield. So you'll never forget your I.O. shield again because it is right there and it is fixed. Uh, there's also a quick look at the actual I.O. on the board. It does have video out, so it's going to support your Raven Ridge APUs as well as those Ryzen 2 processors. And here finally is an updated Aorus X399 motherboard. So this is going to be compatible with current generation Threadripper CPUs, but uh, AMD has already confirmed that Threadripper 2 is going to be coming out around August. Since we are maybe going to have higher core count processors on Threadripper 2, we're expecting 24 core, we're hoping for 32 core as well. I feel like AMD should definitely do 32 core, so if anyone from AMD is watching, guys, you need to do 32 core. I mean, we showed Intel's 28 core over there earlier in this video, you guys need to one up them with 32. Regardless of what is actually available CPU-wise though, they are going to need some beefier power delivery to handle those higher core counts and uh, maybe even higher clock speeds too. So to that effect, Gigabyte has added some beefier heat sinks, uh, heat pipe connected up here. These are copper fins on there, which should uh, provide a bit of extra aid and heat dissipation. There's also dual 8-pin power delivery up on top, and even away from the CPU socket, every spot on this board is filled with something. We've got three M.2 slots here with uh, heat sink covers for the two upper ones. This one is tied into the heat sink that's for the X399 chipset over here as well. And then Gigabyte has added a PCI Express graphics power connector there to provide some extra juice to the PCI Express slots depending on how, if you have those entirely populated or not. This board does have some RGB effects and uh, they've skipped going with the RGB lighting on the DIMM slots and on the PCIe slots, which I, I like. That uh, lighting there that they had on some of the prior boards was just maybe a little bit too much for me and it also had individual LEDs. Here they've uh, created a bit more of a diffusion and they have some lighting effects down here on the chipset. Over here on the ESS Sabre Hi-Fi power delivery area for the audio, as well as a bit up here on the uh, cover for that heatsink and the I.O. This board also has a back plate. Uh, across the entire back of the board, which is uh, great for out-of-the-box builds, keeping things protected there and uh, also just looking cool. Horus logo on the back there too. And also worth pointing out, this board is just insanely heavy. Uh, that's due, of course, to a lot of the copper that's used for the heat sinks and it just being so incredibly packed with features, add-on points, M.2 slots, and uh, lots and lots of dim slots. Finally, here's a look at the I.O. Tons and tons of USB 3.0 as well as USB 3.1 Type-C and Type-A connectors. 
uh, all the gold-plated outputs for your audio. And then we got three NICs. Uh, for, uh, this one's 10G. These are gigabit NICs, so you get two of those. And then you got a 10 gigabit Aquantia NIC also integrated there. So if you're moving lots and lots of files over a network, that is going to be incredibly helpful for you. Oh, and also, of course, the fixed I.O. shield there as well, which uh, you would expect on the high end since they've also got it on the lower end B450 boards now too. But guys, that's going to wrap it up for my coverage here on the Gigabyte floor of Taipei 101 in Taipei, Taiwan. I always love coming here. I think this has been my favorite stop so far because we had some actual hardcore PC hardware to share with you. 28 core CPU from Intel, some anticipated upcoming Threadripper 2 stuff, a battle brewing, a war perhaps in the high-end desktop space between Intel and AMD. Uh, but guys, if you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up button. And of course, a big thank you to my sponsors, Gigabyte. Thank you, Gigabyte, for sponsoring my Computex coverage, as well as Team Group, Thermaltake, and Cooler Master. I got more videos coming at you, so hit the thumbs up button, and we'll see you in the next one.